I may forget okay. things, but I'll do my That's best. That's okay. That's totally fine. <laughs> um, in Vancouver, you use actors such as Larry Musser uh, multiple times. You were able to use them without it blaring to the viewer that it was the same person um, that is the repeat actor. How did you know how to choose the person to make it work? How did, how, when you were going through that process, like Larry Musser was used maybe four or five times. How, and he never stood out as that guy. How did you make well, it? Well, I didn't do the casting in Vancouver. There was a casting director in Vancouver that did that casting. Oh, so. What? No, I thought you worked on both. No, okay, then I missed. But you well, did the first, the first, the first five seasons it shot in Vancouver. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. I would cast the major guest stars in Los Angeles, and then the smaller parts would be cast up in Vancouver. Oh. Then season, then season six, the show moved to LA. So six, seven, eight, nine, I did the whole thing in right. LA because we shot on the lot at Fox. But um, yeah, those first years we had, we split it. So I didn't hire Larry, they did. And I honestly, we never repeated people, as far as I recall, uh, from LA, I don't think we ever repeated anybody. That's why for me, nine years later, it got more and more difficult to find, you know, the good people to do the show. So, um, but yeah, I know Vancouver did recycle just because they had to because their pool at that time the pool was much smaller the talent pool was much smaller than obviously it is now because now vancouver is you know a mecca the pilot was done in-house at fox okay. just because they only had to cast david and jillian sure so essentially so the casting department at fox did the pilot and then um, at the time, you know, I was, turn this off, at the time I was looking for a job because I was on staff at Columbia Television um, on, in the casting department there and they condensed their departments and I got laid off. This was in 93. And at the time there was a casting director, well, there was a casting director that had worked for us while I was on staff who then became the head of casting at 20th Century Fox. And his name was Randy Stone. And in 93, when I was out on the street looking for a job, I called Randy, you know, just out of the blue and said, you know, I just finished this gig. I just finished this show. You know, I had a series that went on for six episodes. It was nothing. And I'm looking for a job. And he said, well, it's funny you're calling because we just finished this pilot called The X-Files that I think is going to get a pickup. And if it does, I'd like you to come in and meet Chris Carter. Of course, I was like, sure. You know, I had no idea what he was talking about. So, you know, a few weeks go by and he called me and he said, the show got picked up, come on in. So I went in and I met with Chris. He met with several other people. And uh, for some reason he decided to hire me and I started with episode one. Oh, I, the show, as the show became more popular, my understanding and what we've read is known actors have appro had approached you guys to come in. I mean, is that, is that the case? And if so, who specifically approached you? Yeah, in the beginning, you know, in the first season, it was, you know, pulling teeth to get people to come in because nobody knew what it was. You know, so I had to pitch the show to agents and explain and, you know, FBI, paranormal, aliens, what are you talking about? That sounds silly. You know, it was all that kind of stuff. So obviously by season, you know, three, um, the doors started getting knocked on, you know, and, um obviously lily tomlin was somebody that was on the list from the beginning um whoopi goldberg was another person who was dying to do the show to which i have a i could share a story about that um we're, we're happy to hear stories yeah, yeah she definitely. whoopi wanted to do the show terribly and i i had gotten wind of that and i don't remember what season it was and i don't remember what the episode was but I remember there was a part for her that they had written that Chris, you know, they all wanted me to, to approach. So for somehow I, I didn't go through her agent or the agent gave me the number of her, her assistant or something, but I called her assistant and they were in the middle of driving across country because she doesn't fly. She only takes buses. And she was going back and forth from New York at the time she was doing, I don't know, a talk show or something wasn't the one, it wasn't the, the view, but um, so I get her assistant on the phone. I didn't realize they were in the, on the bus and I'm talking to him and I said, we've got this episode. We'd love for her to do it. 
and he's looking at the schedule and he's saying, you know, I just don't think with the, the way this is going to work out, I just don't think it's going to work. And then I hear in the background, what do you mean it's not going to work? I, I want to do that. And I, it's her. It's Whoopi. She grabs the phone from him and she starts talking to me. And I'm like, holy crap, this is too funny. <laughs> so I explain everything to her and she's, you know, salivating. And, she, you know, it just, it couldn't, with her schedule, it couldn't work out. So she was obviously very disappointed, as were we. And uh, I, I, I wish I could remember what the episode was and who I knew, but I don't. Um, but I just remember that phone call because I was in such awe of speaking to the whoop, as it were. God. I think Sigourney Weaver was another one. Oh my God. And that couldn't, that couldn't work out. Um, you know, obviously we did get Ed Asner that worked with Lily in the, the ghost episode. Um, you know, I, I, I don't remember all the, oh, the pop out. Jeez. Um, do you have any memories um, that are personal favorites of yours that you could share with us about working on the show? Oh my God, there's so many, you know, it, it was such a wild ride, you know, nine years of, of, it was tough, it was tough, you know, it was a tough job, it was a fun job, um, obviously very rewarding, but, you know, I have to say just working with Chris and the gang was, you know, probably the best part of it all, um, and, you know, getting those scripts every week and reading, you know, it was like Christmas, getting a script to read the next script every week to see what it was because you know as you know they were incredible you know and it had it ups it had its you know ebbs and flows as it were but um there's just i mean there's so uh, you have you have to like ask me something specific or about something specific um i have so many stories i you know i don't go i didn't go to the set very often just okay. because I'm, while they're filming, I'm casting the next episode. Okay. You know, it's a constant cycle, it never stops. Okay. So once I finish casting an episode and off it goes to shoot, I have the next script right then and I'm starting the next process. Oh, wow, so, okay. And not to say that I didn't go to the set because I, you know, I, when I could, once it was in Los Angeles, obviously, mm -hmm. I would go visit from time to time just because I wanted to see some of these sets they built were insane. You know, that ghost house that they, that whole house they built oh, on the wow. set. Wow. And there was that one episode that they built in the subway tunnel. And of course the episode that I was in. How sure. did you end up in that episode? How did you end up as a guest star? It wasn't my choice. It wasn't me. I didn't create that. Okay. The story, the story of this is in, that was season six. That was the first episode of okay. season six when they, the year that they came back to shoot in LA. And prior to that, they had done the feature that I was not involved in casting the features, by the way. Um, in the feature, they had the effect of the alien that popped out of the guy's abdomen. And in the feature, the guy that they mold, that they built that dummy of was a fireman in the movie. Mm -hmm. And so they still had that dummy. And you know, in that episode, the effect was the creature busts out of the guy's abdomen. Mm -hmm. So in our production meeting, you know, we always have a concept meeting before each episode. And we talk about how we're gonna do everything. And we got to that part and Chris mentioned, you know, let's just, let's hire somebody to look like that face of the dummy. So we don't have to build another dummy. It would just, you know, be easier for them to do. And he, and he looked across the room and he said, like you, Rick. I said, like me? Because I guess he thought I looked like the dummy, the face. So I kind of chuckled, took it in stride and okay, fine. Left and went back to my office, really not thinking he was serious about it. And then the line producer called me, you know, a couple hours later and said, so are you gonna do this? And I said, wait, was he serious? I mean, you guys really want me to do this? He said, yeah, he wants you to do it. I was like, okay. I said, you know, I, I, I'm going to be casting the next episode while we're shooting, but, you know, it's manageable. I can figure it out. So um, started pre-production. They dyed my hair. They had to take all these photographs of me as the scientist that they put around the house, you know, so I was kind of 
busy working my normal job and then do, doing these photo shoots and going to makeup tests and the wardrobe things. And, but it was kind of fun. You know, I thought I'll just go along for the ride. And then the days of shooting, there was two days of shooting out in Palmdale. I don't know if you know, Palmdale is north of LA. It's, it's kind, of, kind of a schlep out there. It's like an hour drive from never, here. Never an easy ride in LA. And I remember being out there shooting. It was really hot, it was summer. And I was in a little tiny trailer, you know, working, you know, from my cell phone to my office, you know, setting up sessions for the next thing. And Chris calling me saying, you know, so who are we getting for the next episode? I'd be like, Chris, give me a break here. I, I'm working on it, you know, but um, it was fun. You know, it was, uh, and I'm glad I did it because, you know, obviously it's embedded in stone and yeah. I still get residuals to this day for a dollar ten. But, <laughs> Um, no, it was fun. And the director of that episode was Kim Manners, who is no longer with us, unfortunately, who was one of my favorite, you know, he was, he was an angel, that man. And I got to work with him and direct and, you know, we loved each other and we had a lot of fun those two days. Um, but he, you know, he passed and, and we all missed him and it was very, it was very sad. But it was fun. It was a good experience for me. And, you know, it, it really got me to see the process actually of what each act guest actor goes through, you know, each time they go to the set and how it works. And um, so it was fun. I got to act. Did you get your SAG card? I, you know, I had a SAG card in the old days. <laughs> you know, I started out my, you know, my initial goal was to be an actor. And I did a couple, you know, I did a couple little things. And so I was on withdrawal for all these years. And I just had to, I don't know, pay the current dues and back I went. And then I just withdrew again because I'm like, I'm not doing this again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not my thing. That's I did a I did a movie when I was 20 years old in uh, Utah. It was an NBC movie of the week with Christopher Atkins, Helen Hunt, Diane Lane, and Conrad Bain. And I, I was a polygamy story, and I was a, I was the bad polygamist who tried to rape Helen Hunt. Oh, it's cute. Nice. You worked on the um, season sixteen. Or, I'm sorry. Sixteen. I wish. Twenty eighteen. Uh, uh, yeah, we wish too. The uh, last two seasons. Yeah. So how did you approach? Yeah. I mean, how did you approach the new seasons after such a? large break and then it was back up in Vancouver. You know, it, it's, it was like it never stopped. It was like getting on a bike again. It was weird at first to be sitting in the room again with Chris Carter and the writers and to be reading sides of Mulder and Scully again was a little trippy, but it really was like we never stopped. Once we got going, you know, we got in the room. It, the, the only difference th those times were that um, they really spent most of their time up in Vancouver. And now with all the taping facilities, I would just tape people and send everything up. So I didn't really sit with them in the room as much. It was just me and my associate putting people on tape and sending the tapes up, you know, and having phone conversations. But, you know, in the old days, everybody would come to my office and we'd sit there and we'd, because we didn't have to videotape everything and get approval for guest casting like you do now. Mm -hmm. In the early days, we would just sit in the room, we would see actors, and then we would tell the studio, this is who we're hiring, and they'd say, okay. You know, now you have to videotape everything, you have to send it to the studio and the network, and everybody has to approve, and you know, it's a whole shit show of ridiculousness. But, um, so that's why, you know, in the 16 to 18 years, we, I would just videotape, send it up, and then, you know, they would say, well, we want to go with this person and I'd send it through the studio and network for approval. And either they'd approve it or they wouldn't, you know, it was that whole game. To prove, uh, getting, uh, it was a surprise, the, the one you cast for William. Um, I'm blanking on his name right now. Oh, um, the, the son? The son. Yeah. Susan yeah, Miles, right? My, Susan. Yeah, Miles. Um, Susan Sarandon. Yes, Robin. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> wow. Um, I didn't, know, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know that was Tim and Susan's kid, but he sent in a tape. He sent in an audition tape. And I was like, wait, 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 hold on. Cause we looked at a lot of people for that. 
Um, and I sent it up to the guys and they really liked it. Uh, and I think, I actually think we flew him to Vancouver to meet with Chris. I think that's what we did because it was important. He really, he wanted to see him in person and meet with him and, and he did and they all fell in love with him. Um, but it was, he was interesting, he was unique, he was different, he was kind of cool, you know, it was, it was sort of a little off center, which is great, which is, you know, usually the way I would love to cast the show. Um, so yeah, it was just, it just kind of fell in my lap. We ask everyone that we've had the pleasure of speaking with. Um, so we always say, if you could say something to the fans of the X-Files over the last 27 years, what would you say to them? Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I, I've never seen a, a more dedicated fan base just from, you know, the, the things I would see at Comic-Con and, you know, um, in magazines and everything. You know, me being the casting director, you know, I'm sort of in the background. I'm not, you know, I'm not in the, I don't go to all the events and I don't see the fans like the actors do. Um, I just hear about it and I read about it. But you know, I couldn't be more proud to be a part of the event that the X-Files was. Um, and I, you know, I don't think, I mean, it did, you know, I did that show and then I did Bones for 12 years after, after the X-Files. So I, and I also did Sabrina for seven years, you know, so I had the privilege of doing, you know, a few long running series. Um, and, you know, it is the fans that keep the show going. And, you know, I just, I, really the only thing I can really say is, is thank you for watching and keeping us all employed and, and, and allowing, you know, the X-Files to become what it became. Because if it wasn't for the fans, obviously there would be no, they wouldn't keep picking it up. You know, we would get those pickups for two seasons. We got two seasons coming. We got two more, we got two, you know, it was always that, which, you know, is so unheard of in this business, you know, and to run for so long is, 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 I mean, yeah, there are a few shows that do that, but um, to be able to be a part of a few of them was, was an honor and a privilege, of course. Video? Oh, they did not want to approve him. How we, you know, we had started to cast that part. We started with um, John C. Riley is who they wanted, but obviously we couldn't, we couldn't get him. And we went down the list, you know, Offer, 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 pass, 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 pass. Um, and then we got to Reese and they wanted to see him read because they weren't sure. Um, and he agreed to come in and, and audition, which is a little, I was surprised that he did because you know people of his caliber usually don't, but he did. And this was in LA in my office and Chris came to the reading and who else was there? Was it whoever wrote it? I can't remember who wrote that episode. But there was a couple people in the room and he read and Chris was blunt. He loved it. He goes, perfect, done, sign him up. So, you know, they leave and then I have to go through the process of getting the tape, sending it to the studio and the network for approval like normal. And they called me and they said, we're not approving this. He's not funny. We don't like him. I said, guys, no, stop. This is Chris. Chris was in the room. This is who Chris wants. You want me to tell Chris that you don't want to approve this? And I mean, I won't tell you the details of the conversation because it got very, it got a little nasty. But um, to make a long story short, uh, I had to call Chris and say they're not approving him. And there was a few four letter words that were thrown around at me. And uh, I told Chris about it and he called the network and studio and laid into them. And of course he got his way and there we went. Well, thank was, you, yeah. one of my favorites. Well, and to see him do it in the room, you know, when we watched, when we did it in the room with him, you know, you, it was just one of those, oh, perfect, this works. You know, that's why when I sent it up and they called me and they said, we're not approving it. I was like, what are you talking about? Are you crazy? Yeah. And, you know, of course, Chris had to get in, involved and scream at them to get his way. And he did, which is so dumb. But that's the way of the world with Studio and Network. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, a story, it's a story about Jack Black. 
Yes, okay. I need to hear this. Yeah. And Giovanni Ribisi. Oh, you remember, I, that, I, you remember I, that episode, right? Yes, oh, yeah. I do. Lightning, what was it? Lightning Boy or um, what was the DPO. name of it? DPO, it was called DPO. Yes, yes. So obviously it was Jack and, and, and um, Giovanni and Giovanni uh, came into audition and Chris saw him and said, no, nah, I don't think so. And I thought, Are you, wait, he's fantastic. And he said, I just don't see it. And I said, Chris, is, you know, I totally disagreed with him. He said, well, if you feel that way, then let's bring him back again. And we'll, let's work with him, give him a note of whatever the note was, I can't remember now. But so he came back the next day and I talked to him out in front. I said, he wants to see that or whatever he wanted to see. Came in, he did it. Obviously he nailed it and Chris was like, okay, yep, good. And then Jack, you know, Jack came in and read and Jack was perfect. We hired him, we booked him. The day before they're supposed to travel to Vancouver to shoot, I get a phone call from um, Jack's agent after I booked the deal with him. And he goes, um, Jack's changed his mind. He doesn't want to do it now. And I was like, wait, what? Because the role was traveling tomorrow to start shooting the next day. I said, you, he can't pull out. You know, we already struck a deal. I don't have a backup. It's in the system. He has to do this. Well, I don't know what to tell you, but he doesn't want to do it. He said, if you want to call him, go ahead. So I said, give me his phone number. I get, he gave me the number. I called him on the phone. I you know, said, Jack, what, what are you doing? You can't. He goes, well, I got this band I'm in and I just can't. I don't want to be away for that long. And I, don't know. I said, you have to do this. You've already booked the deal. If you don't do it, you're in breach of your contract. I'll call SAG. I'll have your SAG card pulled. I mean, I had to get, you know, I had, it got a little crazy because I was really freaking out that I was going to lose him and I'd be screwed. So after our conversation, he obviously calmed down and he decided to go and the show became what it became. And I think it was one of the greatest, I think it was one of those great X-Files episodes. I still do. I Years later, his girlfriend, who I can't remember who it was, came into audition to me for another show and Jack came with her to the audition into the room. <laughs> and I was like, uh oh, is this gonna be weird? But it, he didn't seem to remember and it was fine. He was very sweet. Your favorite yeah. monster of the week that you yeah. remember casting? Uh, well, I think Doug is at the top of that list, Tombs. You know, I always, I loved casting that part. And you know, Doug, I knew Doug from a previous show I was on. Um, and I just thought he was going to be perfect for it. And obviously they agreed. Um, I always thought Nick Chinlin was really good. Um, well, Kamal, Kamal was, is a huge, huge fan. When he, I didn't realize that when we were going to get him and I found out. And oh, I, I remember at the rap party, we had a big rap party at the, um, the Museum of Natural History where the Endeavor space shuttle is. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, we had the party underneath the shuttle. And um, Joel McHale and Kamel came up to me and they both said, oh my God, we would have paid you to do the show. Thank you so much. Aww. Is Joel a big fan too? Oh yeah, he was a oh, big wow. fan. That's so um, I don't think not as big as Kamel, but he still, when I approached his agent about it, you know, he was very, you know, oh my God, he'll be, he'd be so excited to do this. So, so awesome. I, sh I, th I think I showed Chris a, just a demo reel of him and Chris said, oh, he'd be perfect. So yeah, it was a great journey, you know, and, and that whole thing with Robert and Annabeth was a whole, you know, wild goose chase, you know, to find people to take over for Dave and Jillian was a big pressure. No, I think we did pretty good. You know, we, um, we met with Clive Owens for that part. Really? Chris, you know, oh he, yeah he was very interested and he came in and met with chris and yeah. i was in the room during the meeting and after the meeting chris just thought you know i love him but he's just not, yeah, he's not what i'm looking for he no, wanted more of that he wanted more of that um grittier cop feeling i think to what rap robert brought to it did you have a hand in so in casting uh, Brian Thompson as the alien bounty hunter. Yeah. I you did? did? Wow. Well done. <laughs> Brian, yeah, well, I mean, I mean, obviously Brian has that face, you know, that just is creepy and 
and animalistic, you know, and uh, it just, it worked. It was, yeah. And Thank so you, Rick. Yeah, it was my pleasure. It was, it was fun talking to you guys. It was a pleasure. Um, good luck with the project.